Howdy APR history students, this is Mr. Bruns and another one of our podcasts and today we're into the 20th century uh, revolutions in art, early modern art, and we're going to talk about the Favs and the art period known as Favism. So what brought about this art movement? Well, there were artists who were upset with the conservative precepts. So people like André Durand, Henri Matisse, uh, Georges Rouault, and Albert Marquet. Uh, I don't have photos of those two artists. That's why you see examples of their art. Uh, this piece right here is I'm pointing to that is Georges Rouault. And this right here is a painting done by Albert, or Albert Mar Marquet. I'm horrible with my French, so forgive me. Um, they wanted to create an alternate exhibition, and they did, and they referred to this as the Autumn Salon. What they exhibited was art filled with explosive colors and blunt brushstrokes, and an art critic named Louis Rossel uh, described uh, its painters as the wild beasts, or the fobs. Favism is characterized by strong brushworks, high intensity, expressive uh, power, violently contrasting colors, and these artists took new way to look at uh, art or the subjects. Favs chose to depict people, so you're going to see portraits, uh, landscapes uh, found in the world surrounding them. You will not find in Fav art anything of historical events or mythological themes. Favs look back to people like Vincent van Gogh and uh, Gauguin for their inspiration, so you, and also Surat, so you might see some pointillism uh, throwbacks as well. But this art period was short-lived. If you look at the timeline, it really went from 1899 to 1908. Your review book might say 1905 to 1908. But either way, this is a relatively short time period. And the one thing you need to understand about 20th century art is that there are many, many art movements in the 20th century. So let's take a look at one of the works of art in the 250. This is Henri Matisse. Some people will say Henry. I'll say it more French-like, Henri Matisse. This is the goldfish. This was done in 1912, which kind of takes it out of the time frame. Uh, oil on canvas. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful painting for its time. Matisse was um, looking to create deliberate disharmonies in his work. He's known for, for saying that. To give you a little bit of context behind this painting, goldfish were introduced to Europe from East Asia roughly around the 17th century, and this would be a focus for Matisse from around 1912 and would become a recurring subject um, here and there. Uh, this painting belongs to a series. Um, in, your, in your AP art history preparations, you should be creating, as a part of a thematics, uh, paintings that are done in uh, series. So always look at, you know, you could say The Very Rich Hours, that is a series. You could be looking like uh, Bruegel the Elder and his series of paintings. Uh, anything that has more than one painting, and that kind of goes through a timeline. Put that into your notes. Um, this was produced between the spring and early summer of 1912. And unlike other paintings that he's done with the goldfish, the focus in this painting is the goldfish. So what do we see? First of all, this is a still life. Okay, Characteristics uh, of the fob are seen here. We see uh, violent contrasts of colors. Orange strongly contrasting with the subtle pinks and the greens, but yet we also see blue and orange and green and red, which are complementary colors when they're set next to each other, which is sort of a tip to uh, pointillism or divisionism that was brought to uh, the art world by Surratt. Uh, what's the inspiration? The inspiration to this painting may have come from a visit to Tangiers, Morocco, where Matisse stayed early uh, January of 1912. And what he noticed when out and about the town is that the locals uh, would sit for hours daydreaming while staring into a goldfish bowl. Uh, Matisse sort of liked the Moroccan laid-back style of life and really how they were relaxed and contemplative. 
So this painting may symbolize this tranquil state of mind, uh, an evocation of paradise lost. Uh, again, Matisse may be hearkening back to artists like Gauguin, who painted about uh, his trips to Tahiti. Let's take a look at some other Fav paintings to kind of give you some reference. This is Andre Duran's uh, Mountains of the Colo uh, Queer. I guess that's how it's said. Again, um, what we have here is a recognizable landscape, but it's also a self-conscious exercise in painting. Uh, uniform brightness of the colors undermine any effect of atmospheric perspective. Uh, that's one thing you'll see in Fava Start. There is no perspective in any of their paintings, no linear perspective, no sense of depth. It comes off looking very flat on the canvas when you look at this particular painting. It's not an illusionistic rendering of the natural world. Uh, this tension between image and painting along with the explosive effect of color generates a, a visual energy that sort of pulsates from the painting. Let's take a look at another painting. Uh, another Matisse. This is the woman with hat. Uh, this is sort of, you know, you could be looking at a portrait is what we have here. Uh, this was uh, exhibited at the Autumn Salon in 1905. And again, we have this sort of thick swatches of crude, arbitrary, non-naturalistic colors, a blunt brushworks that we would see from the Favs. She is uh, leaning over a chair that her right arm is resting on, and she's just sort of kind of looking at us. And we want to kind of harken back to other works, female portraits. Uh, we could be looking at uh, our Mona Lisa, for example, and other works that have a female portrait. And finally, another Matisse, The Joy of Life. We have a large pastoral landscape depicting sort of this golden age, reclining nudes in the foreground, uh, playing pan pipes, another piper herds goats in the, in the right midground. Uh, people are embracing each other on the foreground. And this kind of really throws back to The Large Bathers by Cezanne. It uh, was painted uh, some time earlier. And the joy of life is academic in scale and theme, but it is avant-garde in uh, most other respects. Notably, the way the figures appear flattened or distorted, and there's no sense of uh, uh, perspective. Matisse emphasizing expressive color, drawing on folk art tradition in his use of unmodeled forms and those bold outlines. Well, that's our lesson on the FOVs. I hope you were able to gain some information from this. Remind you that you should be in your textbooks uh, getting this information or using your smart history reading guides along the way.